If you don't think RVs should have TVs in them, stay tuned. I think you might like what you see out of this layout. Hello and welcome everybody. Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV of Coldwater, Michigan with a Spirit 2145 RBX. This is a model I had a couple requests for. I saw one roll in and I wanted to get it marked off my hit list and keep fulfilling all those best I can. Please keep those requests coming, by the way. Help me help you, Jerry Maguire style. So what are we looking at on this one? This is an interesting blend of like old meets new. And what I mean by that is it's a very classic camping layout where you've got like a U-Dinette slide, a private front bedroom, uh, a, uh, a nice rear bathroom, but the RV is made to be a specific size, a specific weight. It maxes out a GVW of 7,000 pounds. The empty weight a little over five, as I recall. I could be mistaken. I see a lot of numbers. So this is a great fit for like half ton towing and whatnot. But uh, it, it also has fantastic traveling access. And I'm going to close the slide up and show you this thing in uh, travel mode later on here. Well, we have a true queen bed with an amazing vaulted storage system. There's actually a surprising amount of storage within the kitchen space, more than I realized until I opened everything up. Uh, a pretty decent bathroom in the back without a radius shower, with a rectangular shower, and some really good counter space back there. Outside, we've got dual Asda walls layered inside and out, heated and closed underbelly. Uh, they've improved the solar this year up to 200 watts with a better controller that you could expand on last year it was uh only a 100 watt package and there was no expansion possible for it so that is i think a really nice feature that they've enhanced here uh but you may have noticed there's a big hole in the roof they have improved this uh with their stargazer skylight <laughs> and i gotta laugh where ember rv came up with the idea of including a stargazer skylight one word these folks came up with the original idea of putting a dash and making it a star gazer skylight and that is rv r and d right there baby not research and develop rip off and duplicate that being said i ain't mad at it i think it's really nice in a, a smaller size trailer like this it opens it up quite a bit it can open up let some better air flow in here or you can just keep the stupid thing shut if that's jelly ain't your jam <laughs> so if you walk in the door and you look left, this is roughly what you're going to see right here. And very quickly, you're going to look at that and go, hello. Um, this is a, uh, basically, it's like a, a dual pane Euro style uh, roof cap window thing. It does pop open. You see all the little cinches to kind of hold it in place. It has both a day shade and a night shade. Uh, you can use, you know, one or the other. They, they hook together so you can make sure that, you know, critters ain't getting through. If you want to leave that wide open for airflow, you're going to want to use one of those shades to help keep the bugs out. The caveat to that is technically the bugs have already kind of gotten into the camper. You just sort of caught them in a net. So when you, uh, you know, open that shade, the bugs are going to be kind of waiting there. So you sort of want to, I don't know, just keep that in mind. I don't know that there's much you can do about it. It just is what it is. Of course, nothing says you ever have to open that. And uh, you could always just leave the shade pulled on it. Now, the thing is, this is like I said, it, it's just a classic camping floor plan. But there's some interesting widgets, whiz bangs, and features on here. It's an interesting collection of stuff. Like it's a carpetless, ventless main floor. You may have noticed the slide floor has a little bit of carpet, though. Now, I personally prefer uh, no carpet uh, in a dining area, but it's not like a major deal breaker for me. It's more of a preference. I would appreciate if you leave me a little comment. Are you team carpet or team no carpet in a slide out like that? Um, you know, uh, maybe, maybe they're doing the right thing here. I don't know. Like that's a 12 volt DC compressor fridge. I believe there is still a gas electric two way option. The RV doesn't really have uh, majorly ducted heating, though, because it's kind of mostly just a one-room thing. It really doesn't need all that. By the way, this uh, cabinet right here, it's all pocket screwed. So that is, you know, actual screws into wood. Your uh, control panel, simple, basic, just physical switches, no Bluetooth fancy pantsness or anything like that. But again, some interesting little touches, like um, giving us a place to keep the, uh, the the sink covers up out of the way and making sure that the little drawstring for the blinds overlooking the window, overlooking the campsite of your RV, that window is very critical because you don't have a lot of campsite window coverage. Putting a little cleat over over there so that string isn't hanging down in the burners you know there's there's some smart features here now this is a laminated inch and a half thick sidewall meaning they really couldn't put a power outlet down by the countertop level in the wall so they dropped a box down and they had to build it out a little bit to do that but they did it and like that's 
you can look at certain aspects of this and say, this was definitely uh, done by somebody who goes camping. Now, it's, it's not everyone's idea of camping, but what I would implore you to kind of consider here is maybe your idea of camping isn't necessarily everyone's idea of camping. Kind of like I said, my preference on carpeting the slide out might not be everyone else's preference. Like, uh, some people are going to say, uh, uh, you know, a dinette only, that's a deal breaker. Totally cool. I totally, totally respect that. Spend your money the way that it works for you. But if uh, you're ever like shopping for an RV and you're like, you want a sofa to sit down for an extended time and somebody says, you don't need a sofa. It's got this dinette and it's super comfy on a rainy day. That's obviously someone who doesn't actually know what camping is like. And um, I, I, I don't know that I would put a lot of trust in a statement like that myself. That's my two cents. Now, up here in this private front bedroom, you've got a 60 by 80 true queen bed. So if you do want to exchange that mattress for something other than a backbreaker death wafer, well, uh, you know, as Disney would say, be my guest, put our service to the test. That's absolutely something we could help assist with, or you can, you know, pick your own. Now they do an interesting vaulted bed storage system, but when you see it down like that, man, I throw my dog bed down there and you're actually going to find they got a little doggy pad down there. And uh, I think you would love that. Um, would somebody, you know, would you use that as a cat litter box space? I don't know. Uh, looking around the storage uh, here in the bedroom, you notice that uh, you've got, you know, full overhead cabinets. You've got your full hanging wardrobe towers. Now you've got that vaulted bed storage system down under that, like uh, where that pad was. That could be the little dog pad. You could put it where the laundry basket was. You could sit where the dog pad was. You could sit there and fold laundry if needed. And then as we back up a little bit, you saw the double shades there on that skylight that I mentioned. Not to mention the fact that there is truly a surprising amount of storage here underneath the entire dinette storage. They put power outlets on the base of the dinette. They really nailed that feature right there. Um, the kitchen having quadruple drawers down to the floor, like that's a nice find. The good overhead cabinet space, even a little bit of storage around the simple entertainment center. They really utilize the space well. Um, the, the RV's kitchen is, I think, a little bit lacking in potential countertop space, but it's not as bad as some I have seen. I like how they kind of hid the pantry over against the bedroom wall. Actually, I'm sitting on the bed right now. I realize there's something that I, I failed to show you previously, and that is if you're curious about TV in the bedroom, that's where the hookups would be located. Now, sliding forward uh, a little bit here, uh, the uh, air conditioner in this is centrally ducted, which is great. This is really not intended to be an extreme cold climate camper. This is a spring, summer, fall camper. You know, the furnace over there, it's going to be enough to take the nip out of the air, but if it's going to get really cold, that's not what it's made for. The belly is heated, by the way, just in case I forget to mention that. And I just spotted a another potential point of concern. I uh, hope you appreciate it, by the way. This might be a deal breaker from somebody, and I want to go out of my way to point it out so that you know what you're getting for your money. Your converter panel and fuse box down there in that corner, if the slide is closed and for some reason a fuse fails, that's not going to be easy to get to. You're going to have to bypass the Schwintec slide system and manually push the slide out to be able to get to that. Again, it's not impossible. It is kind of designed to be able to do that, but that's, that's not a fun day. That's not a fun thing. But what is cool, sealed edge thermal foil countertops and tabletops and bathroom counters all the way through. All the windows that you're seeing here, they're all breeze windows. So, you know, again, it's kind of a collection of good and bad. And some people might go, well, that's not a problem for me And on certain things. And some people might go, oh, no, absolutely not. Well, you know, that's why I'm pointing this stuff out so that you know. Now, over here in the shower, the bathroom is actually surprisingly tight. I, I might have spoken a little bit too soon in my intro. Like, uh, it's a rectangular shower, not a radius. Uh, it's a six and a half foot interior ceiling, whereas the big Spirit Ultralights, not the, the little Spirit XTR that we're in, the big Spirits have an extra tall ceiling. These do not have that. The, the space around the toilet, the leg room was okay. If you're a righty, it's a little bit tidy. I kind of wish they would have just sort of centered up that toilet. Now, this being a laminated floor, I can't believe there's something in the way that would prevent them from doing that. But I'm also not an engineer. I don't have a floor plan, uh, you know, a, a schematic of the flooring system or anything like that. So maybe there's something in the way that I'm not aware of, you know. Nice little lipid storage, storage cabinet. I love this over here. I like that uh, enclosed kind of towel space. I'm not a big fan of open storage, 
but because they do give us the one chunk there with the doors, I'm okay with it, you know, I'm okay. Uh, this, though, this is above the little mini camp kitchen, and it's just a giant chunk of counter space. And I'm kind of curious, like, I love extra counter space. I kind of prefer it more in the kitchen. I think there's more counter space here in the bathroom, actually, now that I think about it, than the kitchen. What if they want to drop this cabinet all the way down or something like that? Or do you like it exactly how it is? But if we close the slide up, you see one of the other really awesome qualities of this RV, and that is the fact that, like, I'm sitting on the bed right now. The door is over here to our left. Uh, this is nap, snack, and craptastic, ladies and gentlemen. This passes all three aspects of the totally turtle-friendly Cowabunga Dude Cracker Barrel uh, compliant test right here. So, you know, if you just need to stop and uh, relieve yourself real quick, make a sandwich, or on a long trip, you know, get... Uh, get a little bit of shed eye, rub the road out of your eyes. This one totally crushes it. By the way, did you notice how I have that table down for transit mode here? That's exactly how you should transport this thing. If you leave the table in the up position on the post, if you really smash it down, it'll probably stay. But if it doesn't, it has all kinds of room to build up a lot of violent energy and smash right into the front of like your kitchen cabinetry. Ounce of prevention, worth a pound of cure. All right, so as far as towing this thing goes, it maxes out about 7,000 pounds. And with the uh, the general length and size of this one, I don't think you need a big giant three quarter ton monster truck to handle it. I think a good tow package half ton, this would be a very comfortable pairing. I think I'm gonna get some questions. What about mid-size pickups? It's pushing it. It's pushing it like salt and pepper, baby, because the gvw max weight of this which is what you're kind of legally required to be able to handle um it's going to be absolutely every ounce of what uh some mid-size pickups can handle and frankly it will be more than many mid-size pickups can handle so i don't think i would recommend that now if you've got a bigger like largest class suv like the heavy duty expeditions with the bigger tow packager or something like that this might be something that could work for you where maybe you don't have to give up your daily driver but you could go out and enjoy some casual camping on the weekend that might work but you know i don't claim to be an authority on this stuff those are just ideas i'm happy to try to answer some questions related to that but understand uh towing stuff there's so many factors we really have to be able to speak with you to know it uh or to be able to give you a good answer now down here you see you've got the little nascar pit crew drill bit adapter for your stabilizer jacks i call that a cordless jack system which is nerdism number 37 as opposed to nerdism number 37 the polder the fishing pole holder or golf club holder or broadsword holder for conan the barbarian fans those things by the way very handy for defending yourself from gas station murder hobos what come and get you underbelly down here you see that's enclosed and they're actually doing the same thing as like a lot of big fancy fifth wheels like montana that's a thermal pocketed underbelly skin it's not a fluted polypropylene uh which is the um the corrugated plastic stuff you normally see in rv underbellies the idea there is it actually does have a slightly better thermal resistance quality to it that being said this is not a four seasons camper the underbelly is heated by the way i didn't i didn't include that little tidbit but this is going to be a solid extended season camper where basically spring summer fall you're going to be fine once the snowflakes start flying you want to give this one some antifreeze you want to uh you know put it to sleep for the winter give it the old pink drink of death and uh see you next year the thing is though talking about that whole four seasons concept there are zero rvs that are truly four seasons meaning like any weather any place rvs are not that so uh if, if somebody tries to tell you otherwise get, get away run don't walk run away from them they're they're gonna they're they're just out for your money anyway the uh drunken uncle leash latch over here has a 1500 pound pull capacity now that's the d ring the uh or the triangle pyramid ring as it were out backed into the the hitch of this rockwood pop up behind me that felt terrific at least it wasn't shin first but the um our uh, oh that that dog leash latch thing that if you put 1500 pounds of force on that you're gonna rip it out of the wall the d-ring itself is rated for that keep that in mind now let's talk construction real quick they use a lot of aluminum construction in these the walls are double asdel laminated the floor is laminated uh the roof is walkable 
but they don't give you any way to access it. Uh, it's not prepped for one of those telescopic removable ladders. Uh, there's no uh, mounts in the wall to be able to accept an aftermarket ladder. This RV requires a totally separate standalone ladder to be able to access the walkable roof to uh, perform regular routine maintenance, care, upkeep, things like that. That's a bummer, but I have uh, a zero dollar solution for you. The Bish's RV Diamond Club. Once a year, uh, we can uh, go through, perform a uh, inspection on your RV at no cost to you. And as long as we're up there, if we see, if you know, there's something we see that we need handled, let us know. We'll get it taken care of. Obviously, the taking care of it part is not a zero dollar charge. I'm not trying to smoke screen you on that, but checking it out once a year, eyeballing it for you. That we're happy to do. And we also do uh, no cost winterization days every year for our clients. So uh, there's a lot of different advantages to being a, a, a Bish's customer. I've got a totally separate video on that. Probably leave a link for it in the video description. Back to the RV at hand. You see this little plastic T bracket off the side. I should have grabbed the actual widget module, but that is for a, uh, a leveling indicator. There's this little thing you hook on the side of it when you get to your campsite. So when you're backing over boards or Lego leveling blocks or whatever the case happens to be, you can see if the RV's level before you got to get in and out of the truck, in and out of the truck, in and out of the truck, because you you probably you know done with that. Now you can barely see it sticking up over the top there. But that newly improved for 2023, now 200 watt factory solar panel, standard on these as opposed to last year's 100, and last year's 10 amp controller is now a 30 amp controller. So if you want to bulk up, uh, add some extra panels on this, you should be able to. It doesn't have any allowances for like a factory inverter or anything like that. Um, it, it's not like intending to be an all seasons off road everything camper. It's just a really nice, like I said, I think old meets new camper, man, you know? I, I sound like the dude, you know, just, I'm the dude, man. And just in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, because I know that my references get a little wacky sometimes. The dude is uh, from The Big Lebowski, a movie that came out a long time ago. Big time cult classic favorite. Fun little fact on that movie. Every single dude and man uttered in that film was completely scripted. So let me know what you think of this one here. Um, if you'd prefer a little bit better entertainment center, oh, that sun is wicked today, isn't it? Uh, I'll leave you some links in the video description, like a, a, a 252 Freedom Express. Well, that jelly might be your jam, basically, if that's what you're looking for. There's all kinds of different shapes and sizes of RVs, because there's all kinds of different shapes and sizes of people, and I've yet to find the one that works for every single person. So let me know what you think about this one, good, bad, ugly, or in between. It's definitely not going to be the one for everybody. There's there's some major points of critique, but my two cents, I feel the goals this camper's looking to accomplish, I think it nails. So I think there's going to be someone out there like, yes, finally, I don't care about the TV, just give me a camper. I think there's, I think you're going to really be happy with this one right here. It's kind of a sleeper model where like, you, you maybe didn't know it was out there, then you step into it, you go, huh, yeah, no, okay, no, this works. I'm kind of glad uh, I went through this one. Once again, thank you for the request uh, telling me to go get this one today. Keep them coming. Let me know what you like and dislike. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and make sure to subscribe, everyone. Mm -hmm.